You're listening to Kickoff on TalkSport. I'm Hugh Wizencroft. With me tonight, Anton Ferdinand, the former West Ham and Sunderland defender. Leanne Sanderson, the former England striker. And Amal Fashnu, uh, activist and campaigner. We are discussing the possibility we don't know when there might be a, a, a player in the men's professional game to come out as being openly gay what chance there might be what are the, the hurdles in there and I think one of the biggest ones might be social media we've spoken about its impact on society so many times most people in fact aren't, aren't even on it but it has such a wide ranging effect on how we see the world now in the last sort of five to ten years totally changing the landscape and I think for a lot of people it has had a strong effect in terms of abuse which I know we've probably all experienced let's be frank a lot of people have anyone in, in the public eye really um, and Anton do you think social media is one of the places where this would be most difficult for a person who did come out as being openly gay in, in men's football there's no question of doubt that that would be the, the hardest place would be social media we see it with discrimi- all forms of discrimination daily you know, um, and it would definitely be a hard place for someone who comes out to to look at their phone and see that because I think it would be a barrage of of abuse. You know, um, but again, with all forms of discrimination, the buck stops with the actual platforms. Until the platforms start doing proper things to to, to eradicate this stuff, which they can do, you know. It ain't never gonna stop. I've been in, I've been lucky enough since the document since my documentary to be in conversations with the big platforms and the footballing bodies, you know. And effectively, I've openly said to them, we can give you options on how to deal with it, but effectively, you're the ones you can say yes or no where we can do it, you know. And so the buck lies with them. Us as professionals, us as athletes, we're held accountable for the way that we are people in the public eye. We're held accountable for what we do on our social media platforms. We can get the sack, we can get um, fined, we can get um, banned, you know. But the people that do it and the, the social media platforms that allow it to happen, they're not, they're not held accountable. That doesn't make sense. But I think the thing is as well, I mean, you and I can speak from experience, we all can, about, you know, social media and trolls. But I think what people have to realise is, I said this all the time, we're not going anywhere. You know, whenever I do talk sport, whenever I do Sky Sports News, I know that the abuse is going to come. And it sounds sad, but it's the expectation that has to be there. Now, is there enough protection for me? I'm not quite sure. I'm the one that has to read them if I want to. You can't unsee something, can you? So it does affect you. But I do think when the player does come out that he's gay, because there are gay footballers, I think people don't don't realise that there are for some reason. I think they have to just expect it, unfortunately. You cannot change. I've always said this. You're not born racist, homophobic or prejudiced. It's a learnt behaviour. And mm-hmm. I think what we have to do is they have to just expect that because that's why I don't read my phone during shows anymore. Not because it upsets me, but because it's, it's, what's the point of me reading abuse? Now, there's not as much abuse now as there was before. So maybe people are seeing things. You know, I think there's a lot of talk about mental health. And I think I encourage people, even listening to this show, that will probably write to me after the show to say something not very nice. It doesn't make me feel good, but I'm still not going anywhere. (laughs) Do you know what I mean? So we have to make sure that there is protection. And when a player does come out that they are gay, unfortunately, in this day and age of social media, because the platforms are not doing enough to make their protection... um, that's going to happen. And that's just it. And I get my fair share of homophobic, racism. It's just it's just how it is. But that doesn't mean it's okay. I just have to deal with it because what am I going to do? Not go on TV, not go on radio because a small minority of people, because you could get 100 messages of positivity, but that one tweet you see might not make you feel good, but we're not going anywhere. Mm-hmm. Is that, I think, is, I think that's key. I think that's key, the fact what you're saying, Elian. We ain't going anywhere. That's the, that is key. You know, And people need to realise that. We're not going to allow people to control our narrative. That's how we've got to be. We're going to control it and we're going to be in, in charge of what we do day to day, you know. But we also would love to have that support. Of course we would, you know. And, and that stems from the social media companies owning and taking accountability for their actions or lack of actions, I should, I should say. Amal, what do, what do you think about what the social hey, media hey. companies can do? Well, social media, I think, just has an amazing effect, to be honest. I I don't really read any comments either or anything because it does affect me. And I do think that, you know, before, if there were other things like managers and fans that we had to worry about, now it's just an added kind of level of worry because, as, as Ian said before, you actually can't troll these people. Effectively, it's hard to find them. It's hard to pick point and say, okay, you're the one and we're going to find you. And, 
you know, you can't do this anymore in a way. So it just makes it very difficult. And I guess for those players who are gay, who are at home and who are suffering from mental health, you know, it's just not, it's just not a nice thing. And this does make them kind of spiral downwards very fast. So it's something that we should all kind of be very aware of. Um, but it's difficult. It's difficult to do anything. I think the most impactful thing about when a player does come out is I'd love to, I can't wait to be asked, to, able to ask the questions. How does this conversation like we're having tonight make them feel? I'd like to think they feel supported mm -hmm. listening to us tonight. But I often ask myself, you know, because I am a gay footballer, am I, you know, feeding into that by having the conversations about it or do they feel supported? But we'll never know that answer until a player does come out. Am I making sense of what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, because you Definitely. just don't, you, you don't know, do you? Like, you don't want them to feel this constant pressure. Like, oh, they, you don't want them to turn the radio off. You want them to turn it up. And I'm often questioning, you know, me having these conversations constantly about it. We have to have them first and foremost. But I'd love to know when a player does come out, how the conversations have made them feel. How does the rainbow laces actually make them feel? Um... Leanne, I just wanted to ask you really about the, the time that you did come out during your footballing career, whether it impacted you you much in the women's game. I know you said it was it was different. Um, was, it, was it a very hard decision for you? No, not particularly, but I think ultimately it comes down to your family as well. I'm very lucky that I have a very supportive family and I'm, I know I'm lucky because I don't want anybody to ever feel forced to come out. I think also that another misconception is there are still female fl players that play now you know, that are not openly gay and they carry that around with them as well. So we have to think, look into that as well, why those players feel like they can't openly come out. I think a lot of the times, you know, for me personally, I never felt pressure. It just felt right. And, you know, we're talking 10 years ago now and I was with, you know, my partner at the time and, and that's who I was with. And luckily I had a supportive, have a supportive family that supported me. But, you know, I don't know all the answers. I think, you know, I get letters, emails, messages every day on social media from family members that are saying, you know, because of you, we understand our child or, our, you know, the person in our family. And that makes me happy because I only want to help people. And if my platform allows me to do that, then I'm going to do that. So to me, it never seemed like a big deal, but to everybody else, it was a massive deal. And I think just being visibly out there for people to see that they can be like me, I think that helps because you don't realise the impact you're making until you do get an email or a letter or something yeah. like that. Yeah, I think as well, like just piggybacking off what a lot of us have said, I think when it, whoever it's going to be, the first person will be a big deal. And I hope after that it would just yeah. seem normalised because I do think we're kidding ourselves if we're sitting here thinking that the first person, I'd love for them to come out and it not be all over the papers, but it will be on everything. Mm -hmm. And that's just that's just a reality. But yeah. hopefully being the first is always the most difficult part. And then hopefully after that, other players will follow suit. Yeah. Uh, we can only yeah. hope that it's going to be the case and that things will evolve very soon. In terms of top level sport, not just football, as Ian pointed out a little bit earlier on, many, many athletes across many, many sports are facing exactly the same feelings, I'm sure. Um, it's been a real pleasure to talk to you, Amal Fashnu, over the last hour Thank or so. You. Check out the Justin Fashnu Foundation if you can.